Hi, I'm Mike K. Smith, and on 18th of March 2022, I'm going to be supporting Donover at their Glasgow gig at Stereo in Renfield Lane. In this series of videos, I'm looking at preparation for that concert and my support slot. In this video, we're looking at the gear that I might use for that gig. The first thing to talk about is Ableton Live. I've been an Ableton user for a long time, and so I feel very confident in using that in a live setting. Through my audio interface I've got four outputs. I'm using those as a stereo pair and then two mono outputs. And in Ableton I'm choosing which tracks to put through the mono outputs so I can apply effects and manipulate those as part of the performance. I'm also using Ableton Push which is a fantastic tool and interface to Ableton Live and that means that I can concentrate on one thing here rather than being hunched over a keyboard and a mouse. It also means that I don't really need to stare at the screen too much because all of the information is on the push. For each of the tracks I've created stems and then I'm sequencing those stems and choosing which parts to play and using follow actions to make sure that in the absence of me pressing any buttons, things will happen as expected and the track will progress. But it means that I can essentially remix on the fly for the performance. In this track I've got some additional drum parts and also I've got a drum part for glitching up. When it comes to the glitching, a tool that I've really liked is the MIDI Fighter Twister. It's got 16 rotary encoders. The lights above each encoder tell you what level the effect is set at. But also the knobs themselves are also switches. So there's huge versatility there in being able to tweak effects and do stuff live. What you're seeing here is my collection of synths. Uh, it's just one. It's the Arturia Microfreak, which is a really versatile synth. It's paraphonic, meaning it can play up to four different notes at once. But as with most synths, it needs a little bit of extra help to beef up the sound and make it sound a bit sweeter. So here I'm using the Keeley Caverns pedal, which is essentially an echo delay and reverb all in one unit and I think it sounds really nice. The Microfic has lots of different synthesis engines, which means it's pretty versatile for covering a, a wide variety of patches, from leads to bass sounds to pads. The other effect you're seeing in the picture here is a sans amp bass driver. The main use of that would be to dirty up the sound to make leads and bass notes overdriven and nice and crunchy. I haven't quite yet decided whether I'm going to be using that in the performance yet or not. You can see that both of those effects are powered by the Big Joe power box, which is really useful. It's essentially a rechargeable battery, um, but it powers the the device is quite nicely. The Hologram Electronics Microcosm is one of my favourite pedals at the minute. It produces really lovely ambient delay, granular effects, and it just seems to make any kind of ambient noises even more ambient. So that will definitely be used on the performance.
Mono Norns is also a very interesting box that I, I may take with me to the performance. It's really a small music computer running on a Raspberry Pi, and what you're seeing here is a looper where there are six independent loops running, all of different lengths, grabbing noise and then playing them back. And then using the grid, you can reverse directions of these different loops. Here's again on the Norns, here's a different script. This is called barcode, and basically it's six independent LFOs all manipulating different parameters, so speed, pitch, playback direction, and so on. Lastly, all of this is going through a Behringer mixing desk, the Xenix X1622. The reason for using a mixing desk is that I can then mix between the different sources. So I have the stereo pair from the computer on 7, 8, the individual mono tracks on 3 and 4, and the return from the mono on track 11 and 12. And it means that I can pull together various different sound sources, mix them up, and essentially perform a, a remix on the fly. The nice thing about this Behringer desk is that it has four separate stereo inputs and two aux sends. So many other desks may have been better, but the combination of ins and outs here really suited what I was trying to do. Because I'm sending one effect to the microcosm, but also using the norns as an audio effect, I can use that on a separate aux out. that's my gear for the performance. Once again, this may change as I get into rehearsals, but this is what I'm thinking of for the minute. I'm really not an accomplished keyboard player at all, so I think it's wise to try and avoid having to burden myself with playing parts, but instead focus on the things that I know I do better, which is remixing, picking out parts, applying effects, and making nice ambient noises and maybe glitching things up. So I'll be concentrating more on playing effects than on playing parts per se.